Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning uh, Sunday school lesson for September the 19th. Our uh, session that uh, we have gone through so far has been on uh, forgiveness and last week was on uh, relationships. Today we're going to be going through on uh, uh, sure of truth. And our passage is found today in uh, 1 Timothy, or correction, 1 John 2, verses 18 through 29. One thing we do know that in this world there's so many untruths that are floating around from the different areas and all, and uh, going through and reading some of the certificate, certificates that uh, have been set, I found that 40% uh, of the people believe that the FDA is withholding a natural cure for cancer. 27% uh, believes America is hiding aliens in Area 51. 23% believe that 9-11 was an inside job. And 19% believe the government is using chemicals to control the population. Typically, conspiracy theories start with a fringe group and then it's picked up by a credible source. It's hard to know what to believe nowadays, but we do know one thing for sure, that the absolutely truth is in Jesus Christ himself. In this setting, John is uh, on the Isle of Patmos about uh, AD 90, and he is writing to the uh, church there in the first part of our lessons that we've gone through about those that have been coming in and trying to persuade the uh, believers to believe something else that was not true and he wanted to point this out and point out to what these people really were. In our scripture reference in 1 John 2 verses 18 through 21, John goes on he writes, Dear children, this is the last hour as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because that you know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Truth secures us in our faith. John's concern with the early Christians was about the false teachers that had come in around, among them and spreading false uh, truth, false uh, things concerning the gospel message. John warned against their teaching and drew a distinction between false and genuine Christians and concluded that truth keeps us anchored in the faith. And he also set down and defined that this truth is found in Jesus Christ. He described the anointing Christians already possessed, including that the following truth leads to righteous living. John again demonstrated his love for his readers. John then described the time in which they leave the last hour. This was a time of testing and suffering because evil would take one last stand. The Jews believed they were living in the present evil age and that God would inaugurate the age to come with his Messiah. In Jewish thought, the last hour was that period just before God would take control of the world from the evil powers. In Christian thought, the new age or the last days had dawned with the coming of Christ. Therefore, the last hour is that interval between the first and second coming of Christ. So as we look at this here and what John has said, concerning uh, the Antichrist, and he uh, talked about the people that was uh, coming in and spreading uh, false uh, falsehoods about the gospel message. He called them the Antichrist because everything that they was doing was against Christ, against the word, and all. He also stated that uh, we knew him because they left in the early church uh, after they was confronted by the apostles and all. These people uh, left and moved out. Today in our church body, it is imperative that we know the scriptures well enough that when these people that come in to spread falsehoods about the message, that they can be identified and they can be confronted for who they are and what they are, Antichrist. All of us at one time was Antichrist because we did not believe the message of Jesus Christ until 
the Holy Spirit moved on us and drew us to the cross of Calvary. At the accepting Jesus as our personal Savior, we was cleansed by his blood and we became followers of Christ and spreading that gospel message. The world comes, uh, the Antichrist the word comes from Christ. It means God's anointed and Hebrew, the Messiah. In the Old Testament, prophets, priests, and kings of Israel were anointed. The anointing demonstrated God's power through his spirit was resting on that person. The prefix anti is understood in two ways, against one who is in an open opposition to Christ and two, in place of a substitute for the place of Christ. The Antichrist in the Bible appears in John's letters in 2.18, 22, uh, 4, chapter 4 and verse 3, and 2 John 7. Similar concepts also appear in Matthew, Mark, 2 Thessalonians, and Revelations. The basic idea is this. Christ is the incarnation of God and the goodness. Antichrist is the incarnation of the devil and evil. Both the sense of opposition to Christ or substitution of ourselves for God, all of us have been antichrist before our salvation. Only salvation from God through Christ's life and sacrificial death, resurrection, can change us from the antichrist to Christians. Throughout history, many people have identified famous figures as antichrists. Antichrist is hostile and actively opposed to God, and this principle finds relative in those persons in every generation who either opposed or attempt to substitute themselves for God. The sign for John that the Antichrist was in their world was the false belief prompted by evil teachers. John wrote that many Antichrists were in this world, therefore it was the last hour, and it will remain the last hour until Christ's coming. And today we have many antichrists out, just as in the early church. Today, everything that we see, it started with uh, the removal of uh, prayers in our schools and then uh, worked its way in towards our uh, government offices. And even now, our churches are being faced with what, uh, when we preach that gospel message in uh, some areas, are even being persecuted for what they're saying and all especially our missionaries in the foreign field, have a lot of persecution against them because of the Antichrist has been uh, openly more in these areas and that they uh, was able to take and persuade the people in great numbers to be against the things that the uh, missionaries were teaching about Christ. We see that in uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, 8 through 10, that then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of powers through signs and wonders that serve the lie. And all the ways that the wickedness deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the truth. Note, these things was foretold as a sign of the last times. When you look back at Daniel uh, chapter 9 uh, in this concerning the end times and all, these things would happen. And in the New Testament, Christ took and, and left us with the message and everything so that we would be able to know the truth and be able to uh, withstand the evil one and the things that he would throw up against us until his return. And in the scriptures, it tells us in these last times, even in the Old Testament uh, prophecies and what we read in uh, the book of Revelation, that there's going to be persecution against us and God's church, and that we're not to be surprised that these things are going to happen. Today, with everything that's happening in our lives, we're starting to feel some of that. And according to the scriptures, it's going to get worse. But we know that we know the truth, and we know that the Lord has told us that the things that uh, of this world, the evilness and all, will eventually pass away, and the truth will reign over all. In recapping of this, uh, since the coming of Jesus, believers has known that we've been living in the last days, 
and we are to prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ again. The phrase points to the intimate return of Christ and the final judgment. For believers, this day is a day of joy, joyful expectation. However, for the unbeliever, this is going to be a day of judgment. Every man's heart will be laid bare before the Lord. All those who trusted in Christ and persevered in righteousness will receive eternal life. But those who perished in unbelief and acts of unrighteousness will receive eternal death. How does our culture today reflect Antichrist's views? We see it every day. Those that uh, want abortions, those that uh, uh, do not want uh, uh, anything with uh, God and government, they want to take it out of our judicial systems, all of it to be removed. In uh, recapping, how do we identify these false teachers? We know them by their unwavering commitment to falsehoods and their departure from the church. In John's day, those peddlers of deception gave evidence of the real character by leaving the church. These false teachers were nothing more than wolves in sheep's clothing as they persisted in unrighteousness, and it became evident that they were never truly a part of the church. Thankfully, true believers have an anointing from the Holy One and know the truth. This anointing is the Holy Spirit indwelling which all believers receive at the moment of their conversion. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate teacher, guiding us in all the truth. In John chapter 16, verse 13, Therefore he teaches and leads us as we study the Bible. As we rely on the Spirit of God, we are protected against error. And that is why when we have these Bible studies and everything, it's, it's good if you can take and join with the group uh, Bible study and uh, go through uh, these questions and all that you might have with others and hear their questions and, and the answers. And the leaders of these groups, it is imperative for them to be acquainted well with the, the uh, Word of God and be able to handle it in uh, like manner. We also know that uh, the Holy Spirit... That, John speaks of here as, as a teacher. I can attest that the Holy Spirit is a wonderful teacher because of the many years after I was uh, ordained in uh, Skyway Baptist Church in San Francisco, California, and went out. Uh, the church body, the deacons of the church and the pastor sent me uh, the study materials and everything. And before I'd sat down and study on these uh, materials, I would pray and ask the Lord to reveal to me by His Spirit the meaning of the things that I was reading. As each and every day goes by, I find that the Holy Spirit reveals even more and more to me as I'm able to comprehend the things that He has shown me. In those times of question, He has laid uh, out the answers and also questions I asked to these individuals so that I, uh, they... Uh, was confronted with uh, their beliefs and, and uh, had to make a choice between uh, confessing that Jesus was the Son of God or not. In our transition, truth helps keeps us anchored in the faith. In John 2, verses 22 through 26, who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father, and whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. As for you, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If, if it does, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he promised us, eternal life. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. In a recap, John declares that every Antichrist is a liar. The fact that they are anti opposed to Christ means that they deny the reality of who Christ, Jesus is, the divinity of Jesus, that he is the Christ, the anointed one from God, ultimately denies the Father as well. A person cannot believe whatever he wants about God's Son, Jesus, and think he can have a relationship with the Father. To believe wrongly concerning Jesus is to believe wrongly about God. Why? Because Jesus is God. Indeed, 
He is God who came in human flesh. John asked, you know, who is a liar? And he closed this section by saying that a liar is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. These false teachers taught that the man Jesus became Jesus at his baptism. Some also thought that the divine Christ left before or on the cross so that only the man Jesus died. This false teaching began to develop in the late first century and was popularized in the second and third centuries. Many Christian writers in the second and third centuries wrote against such hearsay. Church councils of the fourth century denied, defined Orthodox Christians teaching of who Jesus is, what he did, Unfortunately, many today acknowledge Jesus as a man, but do not believe that he is God also. They do not believe the Bible's teachings about who Jesus is and what he has done. John next stressed the serious nature of mis misunderstanding Jesus' role by stating such a person is the Antichrist. John left no doubt about the identification of these false teachers. Clearly explained, there is no such thing as faith in God, depart from Jesus Christ. Denying Jesus is, is the Christ is nothing more or less than a denial of God. The last part of verse 22 could be translated, the one who denies the Father also denies the Son also. He calls attention to the Antichrist in opposing the witnesses and testimony of the Father, the seal that he gave uh, to his Son, in John 6, 27, uh, is a reference back to this seal. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Upon our acceptance of Christ as our personal Savior, we are sealed in accordance with the Word of God. But two, we are part of that relationship between God the Son, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. In 23, uh, biblical truth, especially in the New Testament, is based on the relationship to the, of the Father to the Son and of all creation. John reflected response to the relationship of the Father to the Son, negatively denies and positively, positively acknowledges. We can state the truth this way. If you think you can have God without believing in Jesus, you're wrong. If anyone denies the Son, that indicates that person does not have the Father. The Christian doctrine of a personal fatherly God is dependent on the revelation God gave in Jesus. Acknowledge is not merely affirming certain facts. This word means to agree with, to declare openly, and even to live accordingly. It comes from two Greek words meaning same and say. To say the same thing, every person's response to Jesus is a response to God, and that the response settled one's destiny in time and eternity, forever. In other words, truth is grounded in who Jesus is. In uh, 24, the first uh, word in Greek, you, is pearl, meaning all of you. And he's narrowing the scope down now, talking to the Christians alone. John was addressing those who remained in the church. Only Christians had the original message taught by the apostles. In this writing that he'd done to them, the New Testament had not been uh, written yet. It had been in, uh, partially and put together and all. So the apostles was the one that gave them the, the word as they received it from Jesus. They turned and give it to the people after Jesus has returned to heaven. And John is reminding them of these things. He's also reminding them that uh, they need to remain true to that word that was given to them. They knew what the meaning was uh, that the apostles had given. And anything that was contrary to that was uh, falsehood or those of the Antichrist. Christians must continue to call their faith to mind, and it must affect our lives each and every day. The genuine salvation results from a permanent relationship with God through Christ's shed blood. Merely walking the aisles of the church and saying a few words doesn't make us a Christian. Same as walking into a hamburger joint that we become a hamburger. 
In verse 25 through 26, John laid out the results of remaining in Jesus, eternal life. This includes abundant life in the present as well as everlasting life in the future. John wrote about those who are trying to lead you astray. The treacherous nature of lead astray can be found in the Latin version of the, this verse where the word used gives us the English word seduce. John repeatedly revealed his purpose in writing 1 John. These references highlight both the Bible truth and that this truth is found in Jesus alone. In these references we have here, again, I'm going to take and, and read another uh, scripture uh, reference in John chapter 15, verses 3 through 4. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Jesus is telling us there in that scripture that uh, he is in us and we're in him just as he is in the Father and the Father is in him. And the only way that we can bear fruit in this world is to remain in him. We can go out and, and uh, share what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. We can take and, and uh, share a gospel track with others and all. But then it is the Holy Spirit that works on that person's heart that draws them to the cross of Calvary itself. We have done our part by sharing the word that the Lord has given us and telling others as he has told us to do. In this, we see that uh, the, the Gnostics believe that the body is evil Therefore, God, who is spirit, could not take on flesh. So according to them, Jesus did not come in the flesh, but only appeared that he did. This is a blunt denial of the incarnation God becoming man. Centrism, centrist taught that Jesus had a real human body, but that he was not the Christ until the spirit came upon him at his baptism. Centrist taught that the spirit remained upon Jesus throughout his public ministry, but the Spirit left him before the crucifixion, since the Spirit could not be associated with uh, suffering. In these things, they're trying to take and, and uh, separate that Jesus is God, that Jesus is the Son of God and all. But we know by the scriptures as we read it that Jesus is the Son of God and that only through him is there truth and only through him is there salvation, because Jesus himself said, no one, that is, no one comes to the Father except through me. There's others in this world that you hear about today, and, and you see on some of the bumper stickers that uh, there's uh, many ways to heaven, and that saying is completely false. That is part of the Antichrist teaching. Again, Jesus said, the only way through eternal life is through him. In 1 John, verses 27 through 29, As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his appointed anointing teaches you about all things and is the anointing that is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. And now, dear children, continue in him so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. Obeying the truth leads to righteous living. The words, as for you, you is plural, marks John's move away from discussing the false teachers. And he's more pointedly toward believers. The anointing that he discussed in verse 27 comes from him, likely referring to either God the Father or more likely to God the Son, Jesus. Here the anointing refers to the Holy Spirit and is only used in the Greek New Testament in verse 20 once and in uh, 27 twice. Receive indicates a past action. This action occurs at the moment of conversion, of salvation. All three persons of God play a role in salvation. Put it simply, the Father provides the plan, the Son provides the means, 
the Spirit provides the motivation, leads us to the point of conversion. Our word charisma comes from the Greek word rending, anointing. It literally means something that is smeared on and figuratively refers to the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, it usually referred to oil, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. In the New Testament, it is often referred to Christ, the anointed one on whom God's Spirit rested completely. In the Old Testament, God's Spirit seemed to come and go from people. In the New Testament, following Acts 2 and Pentecost, God's Spirit comes at the point of salvation to be the continuous presence of God in the lives of believers. The anointing and the Spirit serve as a mark of genuine salvation and provides a safeguard against error. John discussed four reasons to hold fast to the teaching given by the Spirit. One, the Spirit's anointing of Christians is the significant source for knowledge. We don't need anyone to teach us. The two, the Spirit's anointing teaches believers about all things. Three, the Spirit's teaching is real and it's not counterfeit. In contrast to the false teachers, John opposed. Four, the Spirit's preservation helps genuine believers remain in the church and not leave as the false teachers had. John reinforced God's command that the Holy Spirit had taught them. Remain or reside in Him, God. John did not want believers to listen to the false teachers. Living in the, uh, and allowing the Holy Spirit to have control in your life uh, is a lifelong walk with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, when I look back in my life and, and uh, where I've came from and where I'm at today, I've seen many changes. There's been uh, times that I have not relied on the Spirit and gone out and uh, not prayed about uh, certain things, went ahead and did them, thought that they looked good and sounded good, but after uh, getting into the situations, I found that it was not the places that I needed to be. Surrendering one's life completely and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us can only come when we sit down and, and uh, daily in a Bible study or reading some scripture passages. And before reading, just pray and ask the Lord Jesus to take and, and give you the wisdom and knowledge and understanding through the Holy Spirit that is within us so that as we read these things, we'll come to mind. Not everything that you read, you will remember. But I found that in those times when I've been questioned about certain facts that the Holy Spirit took and provided the answers to them and where to find it immediately in the scriptures. And I find that's uh, being even more so each and every day. So the Holy Spirit is a great teacher. He helps us to understand the things that God has left for us. He also helps us to identify those that are antichrist and are trying to take and, and persuade others to leave. And that's why in our church body, we have our deacons that are set up and, and that work within the church with our pastors. And their job is to help take and, and uh, maintain through the congregation that this assurance is there, that there's nobody going around spreading false lies and all. And, in, and if they are, then our deacon body uh, will take and, and come bef uh, bring this person, have them come before them, and they will take and, and discuss the things that they're going through. One thing, too, that we should all do uh, very much for, not only praying for our pastor, but we should also pray for our deacons and, and the work that they have to do. And because a lot of them are still working their secular jobs on the outside and, and, uh, and all, so they're having to take and not only take care of their uh, workplace, but their uh, family life and all, and yet are in charge of making sure that our uh, spiritual life within the church body is also kept pure. In recapping of this uh, and going through and, and uh, talking about this, uh, John in verse uh, 28 also talks about uh, Christ uh, coming again and that we shouldn't uh, be ashamed at his uh, coming. Those that have failed to take and keep God's word and all at the coming of Christ will be uh, ashamed and of the things that they have done and, and all or have left undone. 
In the early church used the truthfulness of Jesus' claims while he was on the earth to express confidence in what he said about his return. This confidence led the early church to anticipate Jesus' return by how they lived. In other words, following the truth leads us to righteous living. The Greek word translated if here, if here can also be translated since, depending on its contents. Since is the more accurate translated here because there was no doubt that Jesus is righteous. The result of knowing that Jesus' righteousness is knowing an additional fact that Jesus expressed in the final part of verse 29. John wrote, everyone who does what is right has been born of him. Another way to express this truth is the ability to do right, God's kind of right. It's possible in only one way, to be born of God. In other words, our actions stem from our character, which is determined by our birth. In a similar way, our physical parents pass along our physical traits to us. Our spiritual father passes along his spiritual traits to us. Our earthly actions reflected our spiritual father. Following Jesus, who is the true, leads us to the righteous living because truth is found in Jesus alone. We see in uh, teachings in uh, verse uh, 27, the Holy Spirit in his teaching in Job 36, 22, God is exalted in his power, who is a teacher like him. In John 14, 17, the spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. In verses 28 and 29, it's taken, here it's taken for granted that uh, Jesus will come again. This is part of the truth that we've heard from the beginning. And when he shall come again, he will publicly appear and be manifested to all. When he was here before, he came privately in comparison. He proceeded from the womb and was introduced into a stable. But when he shall come again, he will come from the open heavens and every eye shall see him. And then those who have continued with him throughout all their temptations shall have confidence, assurance, and joy in the sight of him. Those that have deserted him shall be ashamed before him because of their unbelief, their cowardice, ingratitude, timidity, folly, and forsaking so glorious a redeemer. We're God's handiwork in Ephesians 2.10 created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. In 1 Corinthians 1, verse 30, it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. In recapping the proof of true salvation is not just believing the right thing. Conforming to the doctrine is not enough. Our belief should be translated into the right living. We are to pursue righteousness in the light of the imminent return of Christ. John mentioned that the return of Christ is the motivation his readers to uh, righteous living. Our attitude toward Christ's second coming says a lot about our spiritual state. How does the Holy Spirit help you discern the truth? I know when I hear something is false in a group, it seems like all of a sudden my ears perk up and I realize that, oh, something's not right here. And uh, then I'm able to take and, and make a comment on what this individual has said, stating the falseness of that statement that it was said. In our summarization of this, confidence, this can also be translated boldness. God desires that we will be prepared to meet him and will have solid confidence of his return. Unashamed. Sadly, many people do not have confidence. Instead, they carry the weight of guilt and shame. However, God desires that his people would remain in him and thus have no reason to be ashamed when Jesus returns again. What role does our church Sunday school group uh, do in, in helping us to remain in the truth. It helps us to study these scripture references as we go through and, and uh, understand what the writers have uh, laid out for us through the scriptures that have been left for us in the New and Old Testament. 
The point of, it, of this session is truth is found in Jesus alone. And engage in living it out. Examine your life. Have you genuinely embraced the truth by trusting in Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Look at your life. It will tell you everything you need to know. If you're not sure of your relationship with God, there's help on the inside of our Sunday School study book. Factorize your life, the light of Christ's imminent return. Are your priorities in the right order? If not, what changes need to be made to rearrange them? This week, do a thorough evaluation of the priorities and be honest with yourself. Ask God to help you with these priorities. Invest in someone's life. Do you know someone who needs to hear the truth? Perhaps a neighbor, a co-worker, a classmate, or a friend. If so, then share the truth of the gospel with them this week. Take it a step further and buy them a Bible if you believe that they do not have one. Also, if you're uh, in the Brunswick area, uh, Brunswick, Georgia area, uh, we'd like for you to come by and visit with you if uh, you're not in a, a Bible-believing church or have a church home. Uh, we're located just off the Old Jessup Highway at, uh, what was that, Cross Street? 15 Nimitz. Uh, Nimitz Drive, 15 Nimitz Drive. And uh, come and, and uh, join our services. We uh, have our uh, Sunday morning uh, Sunday school hour here in the church. Uh, and uh, this past couple of weeks, we've been meeting in the sanctuary with all of our Sunday school classes uh, starting at 9.15. Uh, we'd like for you to come and join us. If you're not able to then, uh, at 10.30, we have a regular worship service on Sunday morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, truly thank you for your word and knowing the truth through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that helps us to know and to understand as we read your word so that we'll be able to withstand the evilness that is around us. We also ask, Heavenly Father, that those that have listened to our lesson today, that your Holy Spirit will draw them closer to your Son, Jesus Christ, and the cross of Calvary. And, Father, for those that do not know Jesus as a personal Savior, we pray, Father, that this day they come to make that choice in their life. Father, we thank you for the resources that you've given us. We thank you also, Father, for those that are on our prayers list that uh, you have healed and, and uh, uh, helped in so many different ways, Father. Pray, Father, now that you'll watch over us and keep us safe. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.